redox reactions in which um, are which one or more um, electrons change spots during the reaction. So um, within a compound or within an, as an individual element, electrons are moved. And so that might change how electrons are oriented around a certain element. And so that's really what we're focusing on these redox reactions is were electrons transferred during the reaction and were they relocated and now do they sit around a different element? Okay? Are they oriented differently? Okay, so in a redox reaction, we have um, one or more compounds or elements that are what's called reduced and one or more compounds that are called oxidized. And so we're going to look at how do we determine which one is which, how do we determine if it was a redox reaction at all. We're going to, we're going to look at all of that. Okay, um, I'm not sure what happened to my slide here. Does your slide look like that? Is it cut off or did I just not print that for you at all? This is just a redox reaction um, for the formation of salt. Okay, we have a change in what happens in the charges and, and in the oxidation numbers here. Um, but I'm not going to walk through the pictures of that because that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. We're going to first review what is an oxidation number or an oxidation state. Okay, an oxidation state is essentially, I want you to think of it as like a, a pseudo charge. Right? An oxidation number is not a full-on charge. It's not a full transfer of electrons. It is like a, it's like a partial charge, right? like a halfway thing. It's showing us where are the electrons located around a certain atom. Okay? And it's telling us, does it, is it hogging electrons? Is it not? Does it have um, electrons surrounding it or not? Those are the types of things that a, uh, an oxidation state or an ox oxidation number tell us. Okay? So we have these rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Okay, any oxidation number of an atom that's by itself in a reaction. So if, it, if we had, you know, sulfur plus something else, whatever it might be, this oxidation number would just be zero. It's just by itself. There's no hogging or, or uneven sharing of electrons here. There's no charge happening. It, it just has an oxidation number of zero. There's nothing happening around it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we have what's called a monatomic ion, that would mean we have something like this, Cl minus. And if we have a charge on an atom like that, that charge would also fall into the category of an oxidation number, right? We said oxidation numbers are like kind of like charges. Well, if it has a full charge, therefore it is also its oxidation number. Okay, so it's showing us that this atom has one extra electron surrounding it. Okay, um, outside of those rules, we have a list of what we, I call them the big three. Fluorine, oxygen, and hydrogen are the big three elements. And they get precedence of oxidation numbers. Fluorine's oxidation number is always minus one. Because in compounds, it wants to take electrons more than anything else. It's the most electronegative. Do you remember how we talked about electronegativity? Right? It wants to hog electrons from every other atom in the compound. So fluorine will always have an oxidation number of negative one. Okay? Oxygen will always have an oxidation number of negative two, as long as it's in a covalent compound. Okay? Um, it says except in peroxides, which those aren't something we see very often, so don't worry about that. And then hydrogen is always a plus one in covalent compounds. If it would be bonded with a metal, then it would be a minus one. But we won't see that super, super often. Okay, so those are the big three, and they get precedence. So if you have both fluorine and oxygen, you, you put in fluorine's oxidation number first, and then if you have to adjust oxygen, you can. Okay, so it just depends. But it, they take precedence in that order. So fluorine, oxygen, hydrogen. Okay, last thing. The sum of all of our oxidation numbers comes out to be zero, okay? Or it comes out to match the charge of our compound. So if our compound is neutral, the sum of them should be zero, right? The sum of them is zero. And if it has a charge, the sum of the oxidation states will add up to that charge. So this is a lot of rules, um, but once we start with examples, I think you'll see the process is actually pretty simple. Okay, let's go ahead and just try some examples here. And you guys might remember this from last year. Um, wow, it didn't copy my um, subscripts very well. 
okay? Let's start with carbonate, CO3 minus two. Actually, let me start with one even easier than that without a charge. Let's start with MnO2, MnO2. Okay, here's, here's how I, I do the work with oxidation numbers, and you guys might remember this. I like to put the oxidation numbers up top, and I leave the bottom space as like my workspace. So the bottom space below doesn't have anything to do with my final answer, but it has to do with just the amount of the, the work that I'm showing, okay? Oxygen is one of the big three, so oxygen's oxidation number is, is negative two, and that goes for each oxygen in the compound. So if I have each oxygen with an oxidation state of minus two, what's that total? Negative four. Okay, like I said, the bottom is my workspace. Does my compound here have a charge on it? No, MnO2, as it was listed, had no charge. So the, my, my totals here need to add up to zero. So what number must go here to make that equal to zero? Positive four. And how many manganese have to split that plus four? Just one. So that means manganese oxidation number is plus four. Okay, so the oxidation number for manganese is plus four. The oxidation number for oxygen is minus two. So it says in that compound, uh, each oxygen is collecting two extra electrons or pulling two extra electrons towards it, and they're pulling them from manganese, which is why manganese has a plus four oxidation state. Do we see how that's working? We're essentially giving numerical values to the polarity in the compound. Okay, where are those electrons being pulled? Okay, so the top I, I use as my answers and the bottom I use as my workspace. Do we kind of remember this little pattern of working our way around the compound? Is that ringing bells? Mm, yes, I don't know. I, we did it first semester last year, so it's been a while. Let's try this one. Carbonate. CO3 minus 2. Okay, so it has one of our big three. So oxygen is each minus two. And there are three of them, which is minus six. What do we want our workspace to add up to this time? Negative, Negative two. And so what value has to go here to make that work? Positive four. And how many carbons have to split that? Just one. So that means carbon is plus four, oxygen is minus two. So you can come rewrite them if you want. And oxygen is minus two. For some reason with oxidation numbers, they do want to, to see that plus sign. So if it's positive, we need to make sure and include that plus, um, not just assume a plus. We're gonna go ahead and write that in there, okay? Does that make sense? This one had a charge, which is why our workspace needed to add up to that charge. Okay, easy peasy. Let's look at one of them that doesn't include the big three. Oops, eraser. Okay, let's look at this one, PCL5. Okay, this one does not include the big three. So how do you decide what happens here? Okay, the rule is that the the least, I'm sorry, the most electronegative element or the element that comes last gets to keep its regular charge as its oxidation number. So chlorine is usually a what? What's chlorine's normal charge? Negative one. So it's going to keep that as its oxidation number. So that gives me a negative five. I want them to add up to zero. So this has to be plus five. So phosphorus must be plus five. Okay, simple, simple. So we kind of work in this box. That's typically how it will go. Okay, we kind of start here, work our way backwards, and work our way up. Okay, multiply on the way down, divide on the way up if you would need to. Okay, so what questions do we have about assigning oxidation numbers? That's the first step in determining if we have what's called a redox reaction. Okay, so... A redox reaction means that there is a transfer of electrons, which means some, some element is changing oxidation numbers from the reactant side to the product side. 
So in order for a reaction to be a redox reaction, we have to see a change, okay? There is a transfer of electrons. If, if, if there is oxidation that occurs, there must also be reduction that occurs. You can't have one without the other because oxidation says we increase our oxidation state, which essentially means you are losing electrons, right? You're becoming more positive. And if you're losing electrons, they have to go somewhere, which means something else is gaining electrons, so it, we can't have one without the other. They're always going to be partner, okay? If you, are, if you are the element or the compound that is said to be oxidized, you are also the reducing agent because you're causing something else to be reduced. If you are the element that's being reduced, you are then the oxidizing agent, okay? That's what they call them. So they just kind of work in these pairs. Um, we use this uh, acronym OIL rig, Okay. Oil rig stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So if I am oxidized, I'm losing electrons, which means I am becoming more positive. Reduction is gaining electrons, which means I'm becoming more negative in my oxidation state. Does that kind of make sense? So within a whole reaction, we're going to assign oxidation states and figure out which one is oxidized and which is reduced, okay? But we use this um, acronym OIL rig. That's just like something that should stick with you, okay? Um, let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, we already talked about agents. I don't care about that. Okay, here we go. Which of the following are oxidation reduction reactions? Identify the agents of each, okay? So let's just look at reaction A. I'm going to give us some room to breathe here a little bit and get rid of this next equation. So you can either uh, just ignore that. I don't know. what. I'm just going to give us a little room to breathe here. Okay. And we're going to find out if this is a redox reaction or not. So to do that, we have to assign oxidation numbers to each element. Okay. So let's start here. Zinc, what's the oxidation number of zinc in this case? This goes back to rule number one. If it's, by, if it's an element by itself, its oxidation number is zero. Okay, so here's our oxidation number, zero. Okay, HCl, it has one of the big three. And so we said hydrogen is always a plus one. And so based on this Compound here, what does chlorine have to be? Minus one, right? Okay, so let's hop over. This compound here does not contain one of the big three. So we're going to take the fact that it has chlorine. It gets to keep its negative charge as its oxidation number. There are two of them, which is minus two which means this needs to be a plus two. Do you feel comfortable with that for zinc? Okay. And then the last one is hydrogen by itself. It's supposed to be H2, right? My subscripts for some reason don't come through. So what is the um, oxidation number of just hydrogen by itself? Mm, may not quite. No. If it's by itself, it goes back to rule number one. So it's a zero, right? Because there's no uneven sharing if it's just by itself. So now we have to determine, was there an element that changed its oxidation number from the reactant side to the product side? And there has to be really two that changed, okay? So zinc went from zero to plus two charge. So let's think about oil rig. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. So zinc went from zero to plus two. So what did it do? Is it oxidized or was it reduced? Zinc was oxidized because it lost electrons. It went from zero to plus two. So it lost two electrons. Are we in agreement on that? 
okay? And so what's the other element that changed? Hydrogen went from plus one to zero. So hydrogen was reduced. It became more negative, right? It gained electrons. So now it asked us, however, for the agents. So that means if this was oxidized, this is the reducing agent. And this was the oxidizing agent. Okay, so this really is our answer here. Hydrogen is the oxidizing agent. Zinc is the reducing agent. It caused the other one to be reduced, right, or vice versa. Okay, yeah, Cor. Um, how was zinc oxidized with that also? Okay. It went from zero to plus two, so that means it gave away two electrons, <coughs> right? Um, yep, and and hydrogen went from plus one to zero, so it lost an electron. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So does it matter that the number? Okay, so this is where that 2 comes in right here. We have a 2 as a coefficient. Mm -hmm. So really, we did have a transfer of 2 electrons, and so that's where that 2 is found. But you're not going to have to really take that into account when you're finding your stuff. It will work out, right? As long as your equation is balanced, it will work out, but you don't have to account for that. Okay. All right, why don't you try the next... Um, I'm going to erase this. Why don't you try the next reaction on your own, and let's see... Um, if we can do that. Let me write this second reaction out a little bit better. You might want to do that as well. I don't know why it got so funny looking, but Cr2O7, and then it's got a minus 2 charge, plus 2OH minus yields CrO4 minus 2 plus h Two O. Okay, so there's our reaction and what it should look like. Um, it got a little crumpled in that slide. I don't. Does it look okay on your slide? Mm, yeah. Oh, it does. Oh, perfect. Okay. Sorry.